within the pages of a book. A world of magic awaits. How did you get involved in making the movie? I was sent the script and uh, read it and uh, immediately wanted to, wanted to do it. And in fact, after reading the script, I then read the book. And the book, uh, you know, just made me want to do it even more because what was clear from the book was what incredible locations had inspired the story. So right. I, I kind of set out there and checked out those locations in Italy and, and uh, decided that that's how I wanted to make the film, to try and do it in the, in the location that inspired the story. Once upon a time, there was a dear little girl who was loved by everyone who met her, but especially by her grandmother, who would have given her anything. Once, she gave her a little hood of a red velvet. What was that? What I love about the movie, and I love about the book, is that it teaches kids and adults the magic of reading. And I think the movie captures that tone too. Well, I think what happens in uh, when you read a book that you really get involved in is that it's it's as if you're bringing the world to life. So what happens on the screen in the movie is kind of an equivalent of what the experience hopefully people have when they read books. Has anyone read to you as a child? Or are you reading to someone now? Yeah, I was read to by my father when I was a kid, and I always used to look forward to that moment when he came home from work. And I was I'm sometimes keep myself awake for that you know the chapter a night that we got. It was a kind of important. Thing. And I, I read to all my kids, um, uh, and I think it's you know it's a really uh, essential part of experience of being a child. Um, and I think that you know those memories uh, st stay with you. And I think some of them are you know hopefully not just children, but the adults who see the movie will be reminded of those experiences. You, you also had mentioned before that you wanted to do the movie because you wanted to explore the boundaries between the imagined and the real. Yeah. Do you think you've accomplished that? Well, I think, you know, ho hopefully we have. The, the, the way we set out to try and do that was to make sure that we did as much for, in, in a real environment. We actually took the actors to real places. So that, you know, there's, there's other fancy movies that take place totally in a, in a story book world. Um, but this takes place in the real world, but magical things happen in that real world. And I always think that's a really interesting combination, that the stories where something magical and fantastical and otherworldly happens in the real environment. Mounds of gold and silver were heaped from floor to ceiling. Piles of silks and sacks of jewels. How was it working with Mr. Brendan? I, like all the characters, I mean, um, the actors in the movie, we all you know, had a, had a great time. I think that it was, it was important that we, we went to Italy to rehearse um, before we shot, and we all got to know each other, and I think that there's kind of like a real sort of group um, camaraderie. We kind of uh, socialized together and had, you know, had meals together, cooked for each other. Um, and I, I think that it was interesting for Brendan because he'd been involved with the, the, the movie for, you know, some, or with the story for some time. He'd actually inspired the character of Mo. And there's a dedication to him in the front of, uh, of Inkheart. So he'd been with it for ages, and all these other characters came on board. And uh, he was very generous in the way that you know he, he was part of that team. What about Mr. Paul? I, I think he's the fan favorite. Um, well, Paul is somebody I wanted to work with a lot, and he was, you know I was uh, always ad admired him. I thought he had this great sense of fun, and yet he was able to kind of play this you know r really able to play you know serious roles as well. Right. Um, so, um, and he's got the mercurial. Mercurial is a very good word for it. Yeah, mercurial, sort of mischievous. Right. And we sort of almost modelled him on a kind of rock star, you right? Know, um, traveling player. If you are a silver tongue, which literary character would you bring back to life? D'Artagnan and the Three oh, Musketeers. Wow. And why is that? I just always wanted to. I, that was one of my favorite books when I was a child, and I just thought it was very cool to be able to be that guy, you know, that sword fighter, and. Uh, um, I would want to s give him a wide berth, though, because he's pretty <laughs> handy with the sword. I'll bring back Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> she and I will jam. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Too. Inca.